In this tutorial, we'll look at materials, textures, and UV editing. I'll kind of explain what these things mean as we go along. Um, our character's grey at the moment. It just means that he's just got a default material assigned to him. Um, so we don't want to use that. We don't want to muck about with that because any new object we create will have the same kind of attributes as he's got on him. So what we do, we pick him in object mode and we right click and we go assign new material. We're going to just use a very basic Lambert shader, which is a non-reflective basic shader. So I'll click on that. He still looks grey uh, because we haven't assigned any colour to that shader. But we have a look over in the attribute editor. So if you haven't got your attribute editor up, it's this little icon here will make it appear and disappear. OK, and you can see the more things you've got open, the more tabs you get along this right hand side. Um, in the attribute editor, it gives us um, further information about a selected object. So we've got here P cube one, which is the basic cube that this started out as. Then we've got P cube shape one, which is more to do with the surface effects of this, the rendering um, and kind of the way it displays. Um, and then we've got Lambert 2, which is the start of this character, this model's shading network. Um, so here we've got like color and you can see if I muck about with this, it affects it here. I can click on this swatch and I could change its color um, so I could make it blue if I wanted to um, and so on. Um, but what we're going to do, we're actually going to assign a, a shader, uh, sorry, a texture to that shader. We're going to overwrite that color. Um, by assigning our own sort of image. Um, and you can see we've got loads of channels here. We've got transparency channels, which makes them go see-through, um, ambient channels, incandescence, all kinds of stuff, bump maps that gives the impression of surface detail, um, relief on it, and so on, and, and loads of stuff. But all these little checker boxes means we can actually um, map things to these channels. So the color channel is the one where we can assign an image to it. So I've got a, a default image that I'm going to map to it. So if I click on this, and if I, it brings up a create render node window, we just want file. Loads of other stuff that you can play about with, but we just look at loading a file in here to do with at the moment. And it brings up this other window here, and there's a folder here so we can go find the texture. So I've got this image by an old painting by David Hockney. Okay, we can't see anything at the moment. We need to press the six key, and the six key it allows us to see materials and textures. Five key just allows us to see materials. The six key will display our textures. And that looks pretty horrendous at the moment. I'll show you what the image is meant to look like. Um, and then we'll have a look at how we can improve the mapping of that. So this is the image over here. Okay, and I'll bring this up in full in a moment. Um, just to go back to the attribute editor, if you deselect your character, this goes blank. If you want to find your shading network again, look, there's the Lambert 2 bit. If I want to find that file node, look, you can see this little arrow there, and that will take me to it. Okay, um, so just remember that if you click off this and you go back, yeah, instantly back to the material. You have to click on that to get to it. These show inputs and outputs, so you can go up and down your shader networks with these little um, um, buttons and so on. And you can see the tabs here and so on. So they take you kind of up and down and have a fiddle around and you'll, you'll hopefully be able to navigate your way around it. I'll show you another window later on called the Hypershade that also shows your shader networks. So we're, we're going to have a look at the UV editor now because we can see a bit of this image appearing but it's not mapping very well, it's struggling to display on this. So I'm going to go into the workspace, the UV editing workspace which lives up here and there's the UV editing workspace. You can also access the UV editor with this little icon here and there's a UV menu here. In the modeling drop down there's a UV menu here and there's like the UV editors here and so on. It's highlighted in green because they've changed it for Maya 2018. Um, so there's a few new changes. So here is the image that we're looking at. It's, a, it's an old painting by David Hockney called uh, Mr. and Mrs. Clark and Percy, who's the cat. Um, so there you go, a bit of uh, art history information there. Um, we've got a few options here to display the UVs. This big shaded kind of blob in the middle of it is my model is the UVs of my model and they don't make a lot of sense at the moment so we'll have a look at those. I'm going to move them out of the way to start off with so we can see what the painting looks like and you'll notice that if I go right click and go to UV mode I can selection put a selection box around them all press the W key and I can move my UVs around and you can see look the image is moving all around on here so it, this the, the, the layer of this grid this kind of um, wireframe here uh, relates to how the image displays on here and it's not displaying very well at the moment because it's not been opened out properly it doesn't represent this shape at all so it won't display very well so i'm just going to move it out of the way for now over here this is where my image displays it infinitely tiles into all these areas so that's why it's still displaying here so infinitely tiles into these areas but this is where the image will always live it will be stretched to fit into this square box 
like this. And this, this is the V axis and this is the U axis and it has a range of zero to one and zero to one on both of those axes. Okay, we'll try and make more sense of this now. So I'm gonna do a projection on this. Now yours might not look like mine at the moment. I've got shading turned off, so look, oh, sorry, on. So this little icon here, um, sorry, there's two icons here I wanna show you. I'm, I'm pretty new to the UV editor in 2018, so I'm still finding my way around it, so I will make a few errors. This turns on the shading. Um, this turns it off, this turns it on, these two icons here, these are all new in 2018. Uh, this one here turns on the um, texture edges, the border edges of the thing. So here it puts a thick edge here so I can see the border edges on my model and on this side, not border edges, border edges is something different, that's to do with breaks in the mesh, but these are texture, UV edges, I must use the right terminology. Um, so I would recommend turning those on. Um, there's another thing as well, there's a little grid icon here. You can turn on a grid if you want to see how well a grid displays and you can see here some of the grid displays well, some doesn't because of the way this is laid out. Um, we're going to just use the image for now. We've got another one which turns the image on and off. Okay, so the, most of these icons, um, if I'm correct, are to do with the display of, of your UVs, okay, and, and we can make them easier by mucking about this. The same navigation keys work in here, so your mouse wheel and your alt um, mouse buttons will move it around and so on. It's not a 3D view, so you can't rotate it, but you can rotate your UVs. Um, so first of all, what we're going to do is do a projection to help lay out our UVs on this image. So I'm going to pick my whole object. So I'll go back into object mode. I'm not, I'm ignoring the hat at the moment, and I'm going to do a planar projection. A planar projection is just a flat projection of my UVs onto this image. Okay, in the create menu here, there's the option in here. So we go here, look, planar map, and it also lives in UV, and there's planar map there. I'll try and do everything in the UV editor. So create planar map, we need to look at the options because it's got the options of X, Y, Z projections. Um, I've got it set to Z, which is along this axis here, so into the front of our character. And I always check on this keep image width height ratio. It just means it doesn't try to stretch the UVs to fit into this square box. It will kind of keep the, the look of them from the 3D view. Okay, and we will apply that. Okay, and play about with this. You can, you know, you can do another projection look like this. It, it, that's a top-down projection. X from the side, like so, and then Z again from the front. You can also do a camera projection which will do it from whatever camera view I've got. And you can see it displaying them there like so. So we'll do it from the Z again, and we'll close that window down. We'll have a look, the image is actually displaying a lot better. If I move this about, look, when you first do a projection, you get this little toolbox kind of thing here, little layout thing so you can stretch it and move it about. If you drag the center circle, that we can see that there's Mr. Clark and Percy on our character's body, um, and there's his wife. Uh, so we can see that, you know, it's starting to display bits of the image. Um, other areas will not be so good um, because those polygons are not being opened up, those UVs. So you can see the side of Mr. P uh, Mr. Clark's head is sort of skewing through there. But then he's displaying on the back as well. So you can see there's UVs on top of UVs. So what we want to do is try to unfold these UVs. Um, it's kind of like reverse origami. We're kind of unfolding our uh, 3D model um, to make it so we can put the nice sort of textures onto it. Um, once I've sort of clicked off this, I lose that little uh, toolbox kind of thing. So the best way to manipulate your UVs is in UV mode. So right click on them, go to UV mode. You can drag a selection box around them and you can move them around. First thing I always do is I always move them out of there because any new projection I do will appear in here. So you can end up getting confused with lots of things on top of each other. So always move it out of the way. And we're going to just concentrate on the body for now. So back in my 3D view, I'm going to go into face mode. I'm going to select just the body. I'm going to deselect all the things I don't want. So remember, control, drag to deselect things I don't want. And I'll just double check. I've got everything selected. It's really hard to see on this. It's quite busy. But if I go hit four, I can see it in just the wireframe. And that helps me see that I've got that selected correctly. Again, pressing five is just materials, six materials and textures. I'll do a new projection on those faces that I've selected. So I'll do create planar in the Z and look, it's separated those aspects of the UV layout. Um, so I've got the body now separate here. I'm gonna move that down here, again, out of that projection area, and I'm just gonna scale it down. I'm gonna press the R key and just scale it down like this. Um, I'll just move that down to here like so. And I now wanna separate the back of the body from the front. So I'm gonna pick these faces here 
I'm just gonna press the Q key to get rid of my transform tool. If you ever find the, the transform tool is um, making selection difficult, just press the Q key so you just get rid of that and you don't accidentally move things around as you're selecting. I'll press the wireframe just to, uh, let's see, I've got a face at the front selected, so I'll just get rid of that selection. Double, double check. You can always um, redo projections and include new polys and it will just switch them to the different UVs and stuff like that, so it's not a big problem. I'll do another projection onto those. Um, so we'll have a look in this view. You can see, it's hard to see what I've got highlighted because there's UVs on top of them, but I'll do another planar projection. There they are, I'll move that down here. I'll scale that down to roughly the same size as that one. And that's the back and the front. Now, because I've got the shaded mode on, you can see that the, the back faces are red. It's because they're, it's kind of saying they're around the wrong way. Um, it means if, if I had a piece of text on it, it would be displayed backwards. You can see like the, the bit of um, uh, Mrs. Clark that's displaying, she's back to front from the image. Okay, so we can flip those around. If you pick the UVs, and we go over here into, I think it's in the transform. If we scroll down here, there's a lot of menus in here. Um, and then we've got something down here, look, scale, and we've got flip U and flip V. U is the horizontal axis, so we should better just flip that around, and that's just flipped it. Okay, you can flip it vertically like this, so flip V, and it flips it vertically like so. Okay, and you can see blue is kind of around the right way, red is around the wrong way. It doesn't matter um, if if the image doesn't have any particular way of displaying, you don't have to worry about them. It can cause issues with certain bump maps and normal maps, but again, don't worry about that at the moment. Um, so we flip that round, and now we want to unfold them. Now this is a very flat surface, you can see this displays really well, so it probably won't unfold much, but we'll give it a go. We select all the UVs, uh, we'll close up the transform tool, and we'll go down to the unfold menu. And I'm just going to click on unfold. And you can just see it moves a little bit. It just unfolded those polys a bit to match what we've got in the 3D view. Okay. Now this one's going to be a bit more difficult because this 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 shape here, if I pick all the UVs here, this has got UVs under, around the side, and over the shoulders. Okay, so we unfold this. Um, it, there will be a bit of distortion because it can't flatten that kind of 3D shape without some cuts in it. Again, imagine if it's like origami, if you try to flatten that, you'd need some cuts in it. You'd need some cuts here so that that bottom bit there can unfold fully. So we'll try the unfold and see what it does with it. You can see how it's kind of stretched out. So it's a lot better than it was. Um, if we move it about over the image, uh, we put it here. You can see there's Mr. Clark and Percy. And look, that's much better. We're not getting so much distortion, but we are getting a little bit, okay? Um, so if we were, you know, really wanted to make it better, we'd put some cuts into it. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm just going to press the Z key until I get that back to like that. And I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to pick that edge there and that edge there. Because we can see it's got a thick line around the back. So that's that's the other UV projection. It's this one here. So it just needs a couple of cuts there and there. And if we go to cut and sew and we just click on cut, it hopefully has put a thick line there. I think that should work. Um, like I said, I'm quite new to 2018's um, UV editor, so it might go horribly wrong. And if we do the unfold now, yeah, you can see that's worked better. You can see it's unfolded that a little bit neat, more neatly. It's kind of is looking more like an origami pattern. Okay, and that just means that when we draw on this, it will just display a lot better. There's a few other options here. This can be quite nice to UV fold along, so you can unfold it that way and then unfold it vertically and then do a full unfold. And it kind of keeps it all nice and straight. So sometimes you might prefer to do it like that. The final thing I'd do is make sure it's a similar size. You want the, the image ratio um, to be of a similar size. So you want to get these kind of very similar size. That's near enough. That's absolutely fine. But it, it is important because if you have these very different scales, like if this was really small, then if your, your image was quite low res, you'd start to see the pixels on it. It'd start to look really mud, muddy and blurry. So you want the image ratio to be the same. So the body's unfolded quite nicely. Um, next, we'll move on to other aspects of his of his um, of his body.